creepy dolls, shotguns, and enough booze to take a life. These are just some of the objects found at the death scenes of music's greatest icons. In 1991, Kurt Cobain, along with Dave Grohl and Chris Novoselic, made rock history and practically created the grunge movement with their revolutionary album Nevermind. But Cobain was already tired. In a Rolling Stone interview, he said, All I need is a break and my stress will be over with. Cobain struggled with heroin abuse and suffered from deep depression, and his heroin addiction, tumultuous relationship with Courtney Love, and fame-induced stress sent him down a rabbit hole. Cobain tried to take his life in March 1994. Love checked herself into rehab, hoping to convince Cobain to join her, but in April, Cobain borrowed a gun from a friend and took his life at his home in Seattle. He was found four days later after his mother had filed a missing person report. The lead singer of the enormously popular rock band Nirvana is dead. Apparently, he was a suicide at the age of 27. Two decades after his death, police released images from Cobain's death scene to debunk murder conspiracies. At the scene were Cobain's borrowed shotgun, a cigar box containing drug paraphernalia, his famous sunglasses, a woolly trapper hat, and a suicide note, which he left in a plant pot with a pen stuck through the middle. Amy Winehouse won a staggering five Grammys in 2008 when she was only in her 20s. Her 2006 album, Back to Black, topped the charts worldwide, too. Over time, though, the singer became as famous for her drug use and eating disorder as she did for her voice. Her brother, Alex Winehouse, later told The Guardian that he believes it was her bulimia, not her rampant drug use, that brought about her demise. He said, You knew just by looking at her, she would have died eventually, the way she was going, but what really killed her was the bulimia. Amy Winehouse was severely affected by both her fame and the pressures of the music industry. The lack of anonymity that came with stardom worsened her drug abuse and bulimia. In June 2011, the BBC announced she had cancelled her tour to solve several personal issues. On July 23rd, her bodyguard found her fully clothed, face down on the bed of her North London home. She had died of alcohol poisoning. Next to her body was a laptop on which she had been watching videos of herself performing. There were two empty vodka bottles on the floor. Keith Ralph became a rock star in the early 1960s as the front man of the Yardbirds. If his name didn't make the headlines that often, it's probably because he was seriously overshadowed by his bandmates, Eric Clapton, Jeff Beck, and Jimmy Page. When the Yardbirds broke up in 1968, Jimmy Page took over the new Yardbirds, and the band soon changed their name to Led Zeppelin. But that isn't Ralph's only connection to Led Zepp. He also contributed to Jimmy Page's iconic reimagining of Jake Holmes's Dazed and Confused, which would eventually become a Zeppelin staple. Sadly, though, Ralph didn't get to make much rock and roll history afterward. His three subsequent rock groups didn't meet much success, and on May 14, 1976, Ralph's life came to a sudden end. He was playing the guitar in his home cellar when he stepped on a gas pipe and was fatally electrocuted. He and the guitar in question were reportedly found by his eight-year-old son. In 2009, Michael Jackson was preparing for a huge comeback via a series of farewell concerts at the O2 Arena in London. Jackson fans were so enthusiastic that 360,000 registered applications before ticket sales started, and the 10 concerts were up to 50. I'm just never satisfied with, with what I do creatively, you know. I, I just regret the limitation of my own imagination. Jackson was struggling with severe insomnia at the time, however. He had gone 60 days in a row without experiencing REM sleep. With this came a myriad of issues. He had paranoid episodes, he would talk to himself, and he was unable to remember lyrics or dance moves. That's when Jackson's doctor, Conrad Murray, chose to prescribe him propofol. Propofol is an anesthetic that should never be used as a sleep aid, however, as it doesn't induce REM sleep in the patient. On June 25, 2009, Jackson was found dead. The death scene included bottles of propofol and benzodiazepines, the combination of which triggered the fatal overdose. There was also an IV drip, Beniquin tubes, an oxygen tank, a cardiology book, and for some reason, a vintage doll. The Mamas and the Papas' haunting voice belonged to Cass Elliot, a singer well-beloved by her audiences but harangued by the fatphobic views of the American public. Elliot's struggles with her weight were even referenced in her song lyrics. Eventually, she began a radical diet. Elliot fasted four days a week for seven months in a row, eventually losing 110 pounds but ending up in the hospital in the process. The next year, Time reported that Elliot was continuing her dangerous diet. She joked that it cost her $2,000 a pound as she had to cancel $250,000 worth of shows while she was in the hospital. She said, The Mama Cass diet can give you acute tonsillitis, hemorrhaging vocal cords, mononucleosis, and a case of hepatitis. On July 29, 1974, Mama Cass was found dead inside her London apartment. She had suffered a heart attack, believed to be the result of her intense dieting. But it was the ham sandwich found on her bedstand that triggered a fatphobic rumor that Elliot had died choking on a sandwich. It was a bad joke that ignored Elliot's many efforts to lose weight and, in a way, her illustrious musical career. We have breaking news tonight. 
Out of Los Angeles, the death of singing star Whitney Houston at the age of 48. While Whitney Houston was an internationally acclaimed singer, she also struggled with substance abuse and a rocky personal life. During the 1990s and 2000s, Houston was married to musician Bobby Brown, and their relationship became a frequent topic of discussion, with mentions of serious drug abuse and even violence. Brown later spoke on A&E's biography, Bobby Brown, and explained that both he and Houston had serious addiction problems. He claimed that he wasn't the bad boy painted by tabloids or the man who had gotten Houston hooked on drugs. Houston and Brown's marriage ended in 2007, but she continued to overindulge in narcotics. On February 11, 2012, she was found dead in a bathtub at the Beverly Hills Hilton. At the scene were a hairbrush, two hairbands, several prescription drugs, and olive oil, which was mixed in with the water. The official cause of death was drowning, facilitated by heart disease and cocaine use. Chris Cornell was one of the big faces of the grunge era as the leader of Soundgarden. In 2017, he and his band were on tour after a temporary hiatus. Soundgarden would give their very last show at the Fox Theater in Detroit, Michigan on May 17th. After the show, Cornell returned to his room at the MGM Grand Hotel. But about a half an hour before midnight, his wife noticed the lights in their Los Angeles home were flickering on and off. Cornell could activate them from an app in his phone, so she started worrying about his state of mind. When his wife called him, Cornell reportedly slurred his words. She didn't believe him when he said he'd only taken a couple of Ativan doses, so she called Cornell's bodyguard, Martin Kirsten, to go check on him. Just after midnight on May 18th, Kirsten entered the room and found Cornell dead. He had taken his own life. The police officers that arrived at the scene eventually found medication bottles containing prednisone, omeprazole, and lorazepam. The death scene photos also show Cornell's guitar, guitar case, sunglasses, a deodorant bottle, and a contact lens case. During his career, the king of rock and roll had 108 Billboard Hot 100 hits, 129 Billboard 200 charted albums, and a total of 67 weeks at number one on the Billboard 200. In the last year of his life, however, Elvis Presley had retreated from the spotlight and become addicted to junk food, as well as a plethora of prescription and non-prescription drugs. On August 16, 1977, Presley's girlfriend Ginger Alden found him lying unconscious on the floor of their bathroom in the Memphis mansion, Graceland. When the paramedics arrived at the location, they found an empty bottle of painkiller tablets and a vial of trisolarin, a tanning drug. When the paramedics took Presley to the hospital that day, they found much more in his system, several opiates, quaaludes, and codeine. He was pronounced dead at 3.30 p.m. His physician, Dr. George Nicopolis, ultimately had his license suspended for prescribing Presley many of the substances that got him killed. Aaron Carter became a team favorite in the early 2000s, with hits such as Aaron's Party, Come Get It, and That's How I Beat Shaq. In fact, Carter already had three best-selling albums by the time he was 13. But teenage stardom can come with a plethora of problems. In Carter's case, it was his parents, who spent half a billion dollars from his money. And the problems didn't end with his teens. Do you feel like you're an addict? Of course I'm an addict. Yeah. Two. I don't have to feel like it. I am. Carter struggled with substance abuse, and in 2017, he confessed that he didn't believe he would live past the age of 30 when he was younger. He told Us Weekly, I dealt with a lot of trauma, a lot of loss, a lot of loneliness. I just felt like I needed to get away. My goal is to be the phoenix that rises from the ashes. In 2022, Carter's situation started to look grim once more. He lost custody of his son and was fighting to get him back in September of that year. In November, his housekeeper found him unresponsive in his bath. He had drowned, age 34. A TMZ report described the death scene. In the bathroom and bedroom were bottles of prescription medication and cans of compressed air and bottles, hinting at a substance-related drowning. Janis Joplin arguably epitomized the hippie era. She was also a fresh voice in a male-dominated genre and a very promising artist all around. However, Joplin also struggled with heroin addiction. On October 4, 1970, she was discovered dead in her Hollywood hotel room. She was found clutching money in one hand and a box of cigarettes in the other. Three days later, her body was cremated and her ashes were scattered by her family into the Pacific Ocean. This was bad news for Joplin's friend, Peggy Caserta, who believes Joplin didn't really die of a heroin overdose as she had used the same batch around the same time as her and claimed it wasn't particularly potent. The full reality of her death, as well as the meaning of the money and cigarettes, might remain a mystery forever. Not only was Chester Bennington the voice of Linkin Park, but he was also the heart and soul of the group. With him at the forefront, the band scored six number one albums on the Billboard 200 and electrified fans around the globe with their unique musical blend of rock, hip-hop, electronica, and metal, as well as their angst-ridden and poignant lyrics. On July 20, 2017, Bennington was found dead at his California residence. TMZ obtained a toxicology report that revealed further details about the singer's passing, as well as what was found at the death scene. According to the outlet, Bennington had taken his own life. 
In his pockets, investigators found coins and a boarding pass for a flight from Phoenix to Los Angeles. A handwritten journal containing what was purported to be Bennington's biography was found in the room, as well as a typed biography in the drawer of a nightstand. In addition, the officials discovered an iPhone, a half-empty bottle of Corona, one empty bottle of beer, a prescription for Zolpidem, and other miscellaneous items scattered around the bedroom. If you or anyone you know is struggling with addiction issues, help is available. Visit the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration website or contact SAMHSA's National Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP-4357.